Hello. Are we live? Are we yeah, live? live? Yes, we are. Hey, everybody. Uh, is there anybody on? I don't know. I don't. Nope. I don't want to tell. Okay, so it might just be us three, which is pretty good. So we'll, <laughs> well just... at least it's at least it's three viewers. <laughs> right, we got three. Let's got see if more. Who's on? I don't see anything. Always record for the rewatch. Don't record yeah. for the live. Yeah. Okay, I got. You. <laughs> I, I, I got a I couple did. people chiming in. Go ahead and leave uh leave us in the comments who you are because we can't see who you are. So Adam and Jerry are watching. Oh, hi, Adam. Hey, Adam. Listen, Adam. If you're gonna watch the show for a few minutes, if a couple people get on, um, I want Jeff to send you a link. And I don't know if Carmen's gonna be around or not, but maybe we could talk about class and what what you and Carmen are gonna be doing. I think I wore Adam out Thursday night. Yeah, I, I saw that show. So, anyways, guys, uh, welcome, welcome to the show, and uh, I hope Denise everybody's had a nice us. weekend. Hi, I Denise. How are you? Yeah, I took took the class, I believe, right? Isn't that where we know Denise from? What's her last name? I, I can't Reddits? see anybody. No, that's that's a cousin of mine. That's Becky's sister. Hi, Denise. How oh, are you? Okay, okay, I'm sorry, my bad. I would like Denise to take the class. She would be fun. Jeff, you met her. You, yeah, you met yep, her. Yep. In, anyways, uh. I hope everybody had a good weekend. Listen, uh, this this top I, I, I want to do the show because I want to talk about class, but more importantly, I, I want to talk about Crips. Um, I have a keen interest in Crips. As a matter of fact, if I had to do this all over again, um, you know, I thought about this for the last are few you, days. Are you talking about the gang or? <laughs> no. Oh, no, okay. Different but, show. <laughs> but, but, but Jeff, here, here's the thing. You know, you never want to stop helping people. When, when no. somebody reaches out for help, you want to help. So therefore, you're I'm locked into the paranormal, and I'm locked into hunting ghosts. Does that make sense? And yep. and that can be fun too. But I think you know, at 62 years old, I think uh, my interest in, the, in cryptids is is uh, is unfounded. It's like a magnet steel. I'm I'm attracted to all of it. Everybody knows how I feel about Bigfoot. Um, Denise or whoever else might be watching. Betsy uh, Seek joined as well. Hey, thanks for joining us. Stick around for a minute. The guy down at the bottom of the screen is Joe Shortridge from 222 Paranormal. I want to thank him for being right. here. And if Adam's around, I want Adam to come on. If Adam agrees, Jeff, will he come on and talk about what he's going to talk about psychic mediums in the workplace? Yeah, if he um, chimes in. Hi, ja Hi Jamie. Yeah, cryptids are really cool. Uh, and I also want to thank Jeff Schlachter from Boo Productions up at the left corner. Hi, Nicole. Joe, Nicole said hi to you. Hey, Nicole. Yeah, hey, I can't Kelly. I can't see the comments. So. I'm going to bark some, all right? So <laughs> anyways, Jeff, thanks for doing this show today. Jeff uh, Schlachter from Boo Productions. Man, we did. Uh, we were out at the Holistic Convention downtown this weekend, and we did about 1,500 shows in two days. <laughs> Not, wow. But they were more like live updates. It was we interviewed some of the vendors and things like that. It was a, it's a pretty cool event down there. It's I wish that. I would have known about that. I would have went. Oh, you didn't. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. The flyer a couple times, I think. But. Yeah. I'm just so busy. I can't see anything. Yeah. It was, it was better than the last one. Good. Yep. So, Denise. I know uh, you're fine. Hey, Denise, do me a favor. There's a post on Facebook that, uh, it's Christmas in July. Write your name down real quick for class. If you're really interested in joining. Hi, Betsy. How are you? Jamie. They nice see you, Nicole Kelly. Uh, uh, Nicole, oops, hi Harold. She said hi to you and not me. She's she's here for you, Joe. Than you. <laughs> yeah, Anyways, uh, I want to talk briefly about class, and if Adam's still gonna jump on, I want to talk about psychics in the workplace a little bit. But anyways, um, class is gonna start. Joe, you're gonna be a guest speaker. Jeff, you're a guest speaker. Mm -hmm. Hi Cheryl, how are you? Um, Here's one thing, and I talked to both you guys. I don't know why um, class is not filling with 30 students. Um, I mean, this is not me you're going to hear talk the whole thing. And, and here's how special class is. You're going to have Jeff Schlachter from Blue Productions going over experimental equipment, right? Him, Jeff? him right there. Yeah. Right, right there. Hi, Adam. <laughs> Yeah, I'll send them an invite. Go ahead. And okay. All right. Yeah, you can jump on. I'm right there. And, and then Joe, Joe, you're going to be speaking on one of the classes. Hey, Butch, how are you? I'm glad Butch is with us. Um, hey, Butch. Joe, tell us what you're going to. You're one of our guest speakers. Let me give you the lineup first. We have myself and Butch, and Butch is special just just to be around Butch. I mean, he's the founder of Tobes. 
he's a little bit older now, but he's the glue that keeps us together. Just to be in class with him, I mean, you know, Butch doesn't say a whole lot, but when he does, you, you need to listen because everything's everything's a learning lesson. Does that make sense with him? He's teaching all the time. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see myself. You're going to see Butch. Becky's going to do a class. And this is going to really interest me. Joe, and I don't think I've told you this yet. Yeah. Are we really communicating with the dead? Are we really communicating with our dearly departed loved ones through EMFs? Is EMFs and all the equipment that they make, is that proof enough? Not, you know, maybe scientifically, but even paranormally speaking, is it proof enough that we are truly, truly communicating with our with the other side through EMFs? So I think that's going to be an interesting yeah. path. Um, Adam and Carmen's going to do psychics in the in the workplace, psychic mediumship. Dana is uh, riding the fence right now between psychic medium and documentary. She's going to be talking about that in her class. Hi, Dana. Hey, um, Dana, sir. So um, I don't want to forget anybody. Who am I forgetting? Don Collins from from Fringe Paranormal said he's going to jump on uh, one of the one of the classes and talk. Joe, tell us what you're going to do. You, you well, said you're, I find it interesting. The thing is. This class is not a paranormal 101 or 102. This is a paranormal discussion class. And I was driving me nuts trying to think of what to talk about. Because you know that once I get going, I mean, rabbit hole after rabbit hole. So, as you guys know, I've been a photography, photographer for years. And I've always been interested in cameras. And I'm getting really tired of people sending orb photos to me. <laughs> so... I'm like, I'm just going to do a show on or a discussion on how the camera really works and how you get what you get when you get these orb and mist photos. And can I add this? And then we're going to record your session and we're going to post it on every paranormal. That's fine. Group page. Well, yeah. That's fine. Because I'll go, I'll go into depth and explain why and how. Hi, hi Adam. Hey, uh, <laughs> Joe. If I if I can interrupt a minute. I was telling you, you know, I had a case one time where this lady was showing me some orbs, and I knew they were nothing more than dust particles, but she firmly believed that it was her deceased uh, spouse. Yeah. It's, it's very touchy um, to to tell somebody that this is just just dust. I mean, how do you tell how do you tell a lady that her husband is nothing but but dust? <laughs> ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Orbs to orbs. It's biblical. You can't. <laughs> well, I mean, we're, we're gonna but break. No, we're, you, gonna break, we're gonna break some hearts and make some enemies. No, not really. Um, the thing is, they have to understand what goes on, on a camera. Now, I mean, I sat in the Collingwood Art Center at three in the morning, at in the the um, audience seats, and watched blue and red orbs float across the stage. So there are such things as orbs, and we know that the Native Americans talked about orbs and, and you stuff. You will visibly see them with your yeah. eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just that camera. But I'm talking about what yep. happens when you take pictures with a cell phone camera yep. and how that lens actually works and why you get the lines or the you know, the orb with the tail on it or something like that. So, you're, you're, you're that's probably what gonna I... Pit, you're probably going to piss a lot of people off, Joe. Oh, well. I mean, I, I find it really interesting. <laughs> No, what everybody's going to say is, yeah, but mine are different. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think I, so. That's that's one of the topics we're, we're going to talk about. And I call it psychic, psychic mediums in the workplace, but maybe that's being unfair. But Adam, a lot of people. Hi, Betsy. Betsy said hi, Adam. I don't know if you can see or not. <laughs> I was close to it. Okay. Uh, anyways, tell us a little bit about what you and Carmen's. I mean, what a treat it is to have you on. First of all, you're a great guy, and I think the world of you, but. You know, you you bring something special to the table. Tell us tell us a little bit what, what you're going to be talking about in class. Yeah, yeah. So sorry for the. It's going to be shaky cam productions here because uh, I, I I could uh, uh, I can't set up because I'm. I thought uh, you lived out in the woods based on all your other shows. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you're getting, you're getting a cell phone uh, image. You're getting cell phone microphones. So yeah, it's really cool. Um, uh, yeah. No. I mean, we want to. You know, Carmen and I are going to do sort of the, basically the same as what we did before. We want to really show the essence of what mediumship is, how it's, you know, can be utilized as a, you know, an additional tool, you, you know, amongst all the other equipment that, you know, we all love to use. 
you know, I, I, you know, even though, you know, mediumship is completely different than a, a, than a piece of equipment, but the fact that we can uh, utilize it, because there's obviously times where the spirits, the entities, whatever we're, you know, trying to investigate at a location, uh, you know, doesn't always respond to the equipment. So for me, it's just another tool that, you know, on any team, you know, whether you believe in it or not, that's completely up to you. That's your, you know, your own decisions uh, and choices. But, you know, it does, um, you know, add to an investigation. And so I think it's kind of cool to, that if you've got trusted mediums, you know, that have proven themselves, because obviously they're, you know, there's a lot of people that are wannabes and things like that, you know, unfortunately, and they put a lot of us that really believe in this and really put the time in, uh, you know, to shame. And so it's, you know, the, like they say, the bad apples that uh, um, end up, uh, you know, hurting us. But yeah, we want to we want to dive into mediumship. We want to explain how it works, how it, um, uh, you know, works in the, the aspect of an investigation and things. So, yeah, I think it's it's a lot of fun. It, it, it's going to, you know, probably open a lot of people's minds to, as to what we do when we go on an, uh, on an investigation because we go in cold. We don't know what's going on before we get there. I think I think it's, you know, it was probably by far and away probably our most popular class um, last session night. I'm looking forward to having you and Carmen back. So, I mean, listen, for anybody that's interested in this class, uh, no kidding, you, you're going you're gonna to see Butch, uh, Becky, Michelle, Carmen, Adam, Joe, Don, I mean, you, you're going to see Tobes and Tobes' friends doing doing and talking about what they what they what they do best, and I think it's up uh, for for eighty nine dollars. Uh, get a hold of Owen to take the class. And tonight, guys, we're going to be giving away a class. I have uh, my little coffin here, and I got some names in it, and I'm going to draw a name tonight for some winners of. So people that were interested in taking the class, and maybe for one reason or another, they don't have the means to pay for class this time. So uh, they're going to be on us. So I think uh, I think that'll work out well. So we should pick up another student. Hey, uh, Betsy's saying she wants to. Do you want to write her name down and throw yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Give me, give me a sec. Jeff, talk a second, will you, while I write a couple names down? Yeah, at, let's let's give Adam a chance too to plug what he's got going on in a couple. Yeah, of yeah. Do that. Go ahead and talk about your shamanic journeys. Yeah. I, um, yeah. Well, I appreciate that, you know, but, uh, and, and, you know, I am honored to, you know, be able to help you guys out. Uh, you know, I mean, I, you know, I believe in, you know, supporting everybody, you know, I mean, we're all in this together. We all want the same things. We all want the answers to everything. So I, you know, I, 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 I do appreciate everything. And yeah, we, in a couple of weeks, um, on August uh, 6th and 7th, I'm, uh, holding a, uh, a class called shamanic journeys. It's, not mediumship in any sense of the form, but it's what got me started down this spiritual path. And so it's a lot about communicating with your own guides because, you know, you ever get those gut feelings of when you're, you know, maybe driving down the street and maybe you, you feel like you need to turn off or, you know, shouldn't go down this way or maybe, you know, whatever the case is. But uh, a lot of it's just being aware of, of your guides. And, you know, you don't have to necessarily be religious but it does enhance your your faith as well. So even if you are uh, religious, you can certainly take this class and it'll uh, benefit because, you know, obviously Christian, you know, Catholics and things, you know, believe in angels. And uh, you, it's certainly you can use that as, you know, the um, who's, you know, coming to you to help you out. But we're going to dive into it. We're going to have a couple days of uh, we're going to do meditations and exercises to help open those um uh, pathways, you know, during, you know, again, during meditations to give yourself a chance to uh, connect with your guides. You might meet them this week, that weekend. You might take a few more uh, uh, days of practice to get uh, to meet them. But um, it's a it's a cool thing to tap into because it really can help you out in your life. And I mean, it's I could go on and on forever on it, but uh, but it really opens up a lot of things and can help you out in your life. And it doesn't matter how old you are at this point. You know, you can take this class. I've got one very important question. Is there any naked dancing around any fire pits? <laughs> you know, I mean, Friday <laughs> okay. night. It's, it's not an immediate no. That's kind of makes me a little nervous. <laughs> Friday night is optional. So, I mean, there is no class, for, you know, there's no class per se no. going to happen Friday night. So, Friday night would be the only time that could be allowed. 
That's okay, awesome. so it is it is an option. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Maybe I'll Adam, uh, how do how do people get Adam? How do people get uh, signed up for that, or how do they how do they make it out there? Yeah, so if you're if you're really interested in this class, so it's called Shamanic Journeys Class One. Uh, you would go to survivalschool.com, survivalschool.com. Um, the, the school is actually called Midwest Native Skills. It's the school that uh, I learned this from, but they also teach just basic outdoor skills. Uh, you know, a lot of us that uh, used to grow up camping and things, they also teach those skills, skills that people have lost and whether you have equipment or not. But this is kind of a cool uh, one-off that they teach that really is amazing so it you know it's not just you know don't let the name of the school and and, and the the website throw you off but if you go to survivalschool.com you'll you can look up the courses and look for shamanic journeys and then you'll see drop downs you want to make sure you're on class one it's going to be held out in, uh you know in the swanton area so yeah it's uh uh it's going to be a lot of fun and we we've, we've got a pretty good sign up so far there's a lot of uh um we got a good list I'd love to see it grow even more uh, because, again, it really it, it has to call to you, you know, obviously. And that's what it did for me. When I heard it, I thought it was a little weird. But the more I thought about it, something told me to do this. And it really connected me with nature again and uh, has changed my life and opened up doors like mediumship, you know, and I was not a medium growing up. And camping is available out there, correct? What's that? And camping is available. Out there, camping right? is available, yeah. And there's some hotels nearby, I mean, yep. 10, 15 minutes away. So you don't have to rough it, but the camping is an option. Uh, but yeah, there's some hotels nearby. And uh, if you yep. don't want to be roughing and toughing it, that's okay too. We're going to provide um, on Saturday, the 6th, we're going to provide lunch and dinner and then breakfast and lunch on Sunday. That's so awesome. and we sh- we'll start about 9 a.m. on Saturday. We'll probably end, you know, eight nine o'clock at night because you know we'll just have some round table stuff around the campfire and then saturday we that's want to try to get done by four or five o'clock in the uh you know early part of the evening that's awesome i you know anybody that's interested in that should uh, definitely sign up i want to say hi to tramp and uh shelly thanks for joining us tonight tramp uh, i know you're busy all weekend again so adam with your psychic mediumship and joe i know uh, i asked you earlier Getting into Crips a little bit because I have a keen interest. Joe, you hosted the uh, Toledo, Ohio Paranormal and Bigfoot convention a couple years ago. Where do yeah. we stand on that? Uh, we're talking about doing another one. Uh, we've been so busy doing other things that we haven't had a chance to work on it, but we're really looking into doing it again. Um, we actually have speakers lined up already and uh, some vendors already lined up, but we just haven't had the time to really put some stuff together. But we're definitely working on getting another Toledo Bigfoot and Paranormal Convention going on. I, I, I think it would, I think it went pretty good. I think it went great. But of course, I I'm in love with Bigfoot. Adam, how do you feel about Bigfoot and other crimps? Oh, I, I'm a I'm a big fan of that stuff. I mean, you know, uh, I've kind of you know got to the point where you know I I think Bigfoot. Now this is just my opinion, you know. But uh, no, I. <laughs> I start to think that, you know, Bigfoot's more in the, the, the paranormal aspect of things. I think, you know, everybody talks about wanting to find bodies and things of that sort. To me, it, it, it really feels like they're kind of going between dimensions and portals and things. And so I think that's why we don't find the bodies and such. They kind uh, of pop in. They show themselves. Don't mind me. I'm bugging out. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think it, you know. I, I, I do think they exist. I just think they're a little bit more interdimensional. Sorry, guys. I'll be I'll be back in a second. Yeah, yeah. hurry back, Joe. You got a question here waiting for you. It's yeah. raining. That's the dog man. <laughs> That's the mill, right? Another cryptid is the dog man, and you guys have had some dog man encounters at the mill, haven't you? We we've had it one time. Okay. Um, well, I should say it was one time that they it was there for about a week or two, and. Uh, not only, I mean, I was the first person to connect with it. And then when we do our Parafest in November, you know, a few other mediums just happen to catch it too. But it was staying away from it. But I mean, I've been at several locations that have experienced a dog man. I mean, I even have an image of a dog man. So that wasn't my photo that took it. It was, I told the photographer, professional t- 
photographer when to take the photo when it was running out of the room yeah. that we kind of trapped it in. So that was kind of exciting. But yeah, we, we do have about half of a body of a dog man uh, running out of a door, which was phenomenal. And I got to see that. Hey, you know, Adam, I, you know, when it comes to Crips, Butch says they are real. I, uh, I, I, I agree with Butch. Jane, when Joe comes back from Joe, you're back. Jane, yeah, said yes. sorry about no, that. No, Jane. Let me get this camera set up. Can you hear me while, while you're setting it <laughs> yeah. up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jamie Nairgan <laughs> said uh, she'd love another convention. Her students could help if you need free labor to, with the setup. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> down. anyways, let, let's get into the scripts a little bit. Uh, uh, just a little bit. Here's the thing. You know, we have all of our skeptics out there, and I'm skeptical of some of these things as well, but I watched a lot of crypt shows. But did you guys realize, and I made I made a short list of these, the Komodo dragon, mm -hmm. the, these were what people spotted, and they were actually crypts before we realized that, hey, these things are real. And Kelly's saying sweet, but I don't know what, I don't, I don't know uh, a little bit. Anyways, the Komodo dragon, uh, a platypus, now here's what they said about a platypus. platypus. <laughs> yeah, when a guy when a guy said he, he found a platypus, he said, "Listen, it's a duck, it's an otter, and it's a beaver <laughs> all in one. Like it's some kind of freak of nature." It, so, but listen, the list goes on. Only a few yeah. people will get this, so it's like a man bear pig. Right. The gorilla. The gorilla when it was first spotted, I can't tell you when. It, uh, European explorers found it, but when they said it. It was half human and half beast. Mm -hmm. That was that a, mistake. Yeah, yeah, and that was a grill. But, but yep. listen, for hundreds of thousands of years, it was nothing more than a crypt. That's all it was. The giant squid, which they just captured just a few years ago. Remember, that was the lake monster or the ocean monster taking all these ships down. So the, 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 the giant squid was one. But here's the funniest one I read. Back in Australia years ago, when the kangaroo was first spotted, the guy reported it as a fox's head, a monkey tail, and human hands, <laughs> and and it was some it was some kind of a beast that would kick the hell out of you. So I mean, and listen, and the list goes on and on. These were all crypts at one time mm -hmm. that are that are living creatures. So who's to say? And I don't know what that lady's name is, Doctor I, I, Mariah. She does the Bigfoot yep. conventions. Yep. Um, she worked with, uh, what was the famous gorilla lady, Jane? Jane Seymour? Jane Seymour. Or was she, is that, or is she an actor? No, uh, uh, Jane, it was Jane, Jane something. Jane Goodman or something. Oh, uh, Jane, Jane, Goodall. Jane, Good, Jane Goodall. Goodman. Goodall, yeah, that Goodall. was her Goodall. name. Yeah. <laughs> they, they're the ones that this tribe was reporting that they seen this type of, uh, 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 <coughs> Goodall. Thanks, Jamie. Um, <laughs> we're so professional. <laughs> but so they, they they saw they saw this thing in the woods these the tribes and the villagers and they kept reporting it for years and years it took 25 years for jane to finally run across yeah. this family of them so even uh five what was it five or ten years ago there's there's a new primate out uh, that yeah. we that was just it was a crypt it was just a reported sighting of this human-like thing so i mean everybody knows i'm a huge bigfoot fan uh, and, and I do my own Bigfoot expeditions. Now, they're not real serious, but I, I go down and I'm trying to find the grass, man. I have been for three or four years. Uh, we found a Bigfoot, but we found bottles and bottles of vodka. No, but here, you know, here's the thing. I, you know, I go down with Uncle Jeff, and everybody knows how that's going to that's gonna go south on the way down. So I went invited him, and he says a lot of bad things to me <laughs> on camera. I mean, editing is a big part of this thing. Well, isn't, isn't that when he started studying witchcraft so he could um, throw some yeah. away? Yeah, yeah, listen, he went out. With, we got back from our Bigfoot Expedition 3 last year, and Jeff immediately went out and got a book on witches and, and, and spells. And listen, he started casting spells on me. What a, <laughs> what a nut, you know? I finally saw what he's doing. I took the book from him. I ended up in the ghost <laughs> office. He's not allowed to touch you. Very serious. My own. He's like an adopted brother. He's casting spells on me. Like, yeah, we're out back and they have a beard. You feel all right? I feel fine. Why? You shouldn't be feeling okay. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell are you doing? Finally, he gets drip. Yeah. He finally gets drinking and says, Well, I tried to break your back, 
that didn't work. So now I'm just going to go behind your back. <laughs> yeah, he's waiting for me to drop dead of a heart attack. My beard tastes so funny. I got like frog toes in it or something. And he's so, probably going to go, cheers, it worked. <laughs> right. So anyways, uh, I, Joe, and I know you're in this. I would like to put a serious, for anybody who might be interested, a serious Bigfoot expedition on. And I think we go down by Burr Oak. We don't have to go any further than South Ohio. The Ohio Grassman's got thousands of reports. It will start off by us doing interviews with people that witnessed, bringing the proper equipment. And I really do, I really want to do that before uh, I'm done. So uh, okay, that's we'll one of the trips I call. Out. So listen, anybody that's on here, if you ever had an encounter with the crypt, I mean, you got the, the New Jersey Devil. If anybody wants to talk about any of these, they can. Uh, the Cooper Cabra, everybody's heard of that. Um, Loch Ness Monster, come on, everybody's always heard of that. But here's, in Mothman, Butch and I went down to uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, a dozen years ago. We went into all the TNT bunkers. Um, we we, we uh, investigated the plant, uh, the property surrounding it, the Mothman. And yeah. listen, these people, if you try, if you go into and do interviews and you tell these people by even any you tell them this isn't real i mean they're gonna throw you out of town i mean mothman was real to them and they have a mothman museum they have a, a museum built for this thing so mm -hmm. i've been on bigfoot expeditions uh butch and i went and did the mothman and sometime when you see butch you ask him the story about being one of the tnt bunkers here's an interesting fun fact so did you know that there is one state in this country that has an official state demon Oh, no, really? what is that? What is that? Guess, take a guess. I wouldn't Kentucky. Know. Nope, not Kentucky. All right. All right Kentucky's no got guesses. the goat man. Um, what's it the is, one? It's that real tiny one up there. Nope. <laughs> what is it? New Jersey, the New Jersey Devil. Oh, oh New Jersey Devil. Yeah, that's, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you know that's wah, that. Wah, wah. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> but, but I can okay. The odd thing about the New Jersey Devil is you was in I, the have, I have some other inside information as to what it is. Now, that might be another show, but the New Jersey Devil thing is a little bit different than what people think it is. Okay. So that goes on a completely different tangent. And, and literally, it, we could spend a good 40 minutes to an hour on it because I'm I'm dead I'm dead serious. Yeah. Because if I was to tell you exactly what supposedly it is, y'all just be pissed off. <laughs> well, is it is it a part horse? They say it's it's like a kangaroo body. It's it's got wings and short arms, <laughs> and like a horse head. Yes, right. I mean, we're, we're all sitting there laughing until we take a, a, a late night <laughs> trip into the pines. We we we, we won't be laughing anymore. That's the thing is, I, I would personally, I have no problem going out there and walking through it because I'm not worried about it because I know it has nothing to do with something that's cryptid. Okay, yeah. say, let me, that's nope. the key. It's Tell not cryptid this. in the end. Is it demonic? No. Nope. Because well, they, they said, didn't they say a lady gave birth, didn't want the kid, and she, she delivered kind <laughs> of a monster? I mean, that's what you hear all the time. Right. Well, the, and that's the thing is, I would love, to, I would, after hours, I'd love to tell you guys exactly what's going on <laughs> because truly I don't want to spill it because I think it's kind of like, it would be so depressing if you found out what it really was, but honestly, it's, it's not what you think it is. It has nothing to do with paranormal. It has nothing to do with cryptid. It has, it's truly, that's the one thing out of all this. Well, no, and Adam. I will sit there and fight over but, that but it's Adam, not because of the information that I have acquired. On but it. listen, Adam, even science has proven that the Kraken, the, the crypt, the Kraken, was nothing more now than one of those giant squids. So there's something that was once a crypt that has now been scientifically identified, and it and it's it's a squid. But that they everybody called that the Kraken. So some of these crypts that people are talking about. Mm -hmm. You know they're real, but there's there's something else. But, I vote with uh, Kelly on this one. What's Kelly say? She says, "Spill it, Adam." <laughs> can you, can you give, give us thirty seconds, Adam, or something. All I can uh, okay, I will tell you this: that it is 
the New Jersey Devil is literally a human being that is creating the mystery, the mystery behind it. That's as far as I'll go oh, with it. It has wait nothing to do with the cryptid, but, but it's literally a human being due to the fact of the information that I have acquired had, that has followed up with the news reports that... But was, Adam, but it, Adam the, the New Jersey Devil goes back hundreds of years. No, no. No, See, we're, 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 we're gonna get no. This you're wrong. Go ahead. Go ahead, Joe. I went to the baseball game and I saw it. It's a big furry thing that runs out and messes with the ball players. I saw it. There you go. That's, that's <laughs> cool. So you're saying the New Jersey <laughs> Devil is, is not really a crypt and it's very easily identifiable. Due to the due to the nature of as to who is doing it for all this time and considering the lineage of it, yes, it is not, it is human that is doing it, that is causing it literally in a shape shifting way. And I will leave it at that. Huh? Now he, here's, here's some things that scare me. I Wait mean, a minute. T- hang on. Time out. Time out. <laughs> so like a skinwalker. There, there, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, so I a skinwalker is doing this. Is that what you're getting at? It's, it's human in origin, literally, truly, those of us that have gone through specific classes per se can do this can so this create an America. image that can distort a human's eye into thinking of whatever they want it to be so if the new jersey devil the new jersey devil has this a, a certain appearance you can make yourself appear that way okay it's, i'm going to tell you i'm going to tell you what i did this is several years ago, and, and I already, you guys already know how crazy Uncle Jeff is. Becky was with me, and I have an old fishing cabin on Sandusky Bay that I gave my sister. And on the other side of the property, I don't know if anybody can go back to the stories of, uh, um, I did an investigation of the cabin, <coughs> it, turned, it turned kind of south. Uh, but a true story, uh, a couple lived up there, an older couple. He went out for firewood during a blizzard, never came back. She went out look for him the next morning. She passed away, never came back. The state bought this property to make the marsh out of. This is a true story. And it sat there for 30 years untouched. I mean, the, the car was still in the driveway. When the state buys property, they close it off, and it may sit for years. Baking powder was still sitting on the kitchen counter 30 years later when I went into this cabin. You go to our Facebook and check this out. So... I investigated the cabin, true story, um, weird noises in the woods. Um, my oldest son, Nick, who's 40, and my nephew, Josh, who's 42, went out at about 10 o'clock at night. They come running back from the cornfield, scared to death. They said this thing stood up. It was taller than the corn. They could see its piercing red eyes, and they were terrified. I, You know, true or not true, the boys would not leave the cabin after dark the rest of that summer so a year or two passed the cabinet collapsed into the ground by the way that the next morning so um, it was just a bad experience there's a lot more to the story than what you're telling well i'm not getting into the parallel yeah, that's another show that, that's a really really good story right this is more of a crypt story so i don't know a couple years later hey danny how are you tree was growing through the middle of the car that cabin nothing but trouble that's my son danny it's on there so listen, yeah, I'll, I'll say this: the, the car was still in the driveway, uh, the stove, refrigerator, everything, the, the shower utensils were still in place. So were thirty years later. I mean, that's creepy, guys. I mean, it's yeah. just, it, the whole thing was creepy. There was nothing good about that, and there was something very dark in those woods. And that's not a Scott story. And Danny's on now too because I did this to him and his buddy as well. So, you know, I'm kind of a smart ass, but Uncle Jeff, when he gets drinking, is a real smart ass. <laughs> so we decided to take my nephew, Jake, because for years he wanted to go see where the cabin sat. This is a true story. And there was notorious something huge roaming, and I thought it was a deer that Josh and Nick had saw, but they swear it was something different, chased them back to the cottage. So Jake wanted to go venture off with his Uncle Harold because he felt safe with his Uncle Harold. Um, to do that. So I took him out in the afternoon and we set up some digital audio recorders and some cameras on, on the, this property deep in the woods. I mean, we really did this. And then lo and behold, when the sun came down, um, 
we, I took Jake back there. Little did they know about an hour before I got on the golf cart to drive over there to walk the hike back there, um, that Becky and Uncle Jeff had already gotten costume <laughs> and went into the woods. We terrified. I mean, absolutely. Oh it was a joke that went south. I mean, he, he started shaking uncontrollably. Uncle Harold, please get me out of here. Get me out of here. And all you could hear was Uncle Jeff doing Bigfoot. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> The tree knocks. And Becky yeah, Uncle Jeff was about four foot eleven, just so everybody yeah. knows. <laughs> yeah, the whole the whole thing went south. But very seriously, we can say what we want about Bigfoot and other crypts. There was something notorious, and not just the Lake Erie monster that everybody talks about, but there was something that everybody spoke of. Even the older generation spoke of this thing that would rear its ugly head out of the woods once or twice a summer. And to this day, I was up there for forty years, guys. I still don't know what it what it is or what it was, if it's still there. But and I never was blessed enough to see it. Um, and I trapped those woods a lot, but there was something up there uh, besides that old uh, cabin. And listen, you walk into these woods and something just negative. I mean, you just hard to breathe. So you know, Bigfoot. When you're walking in the woods, I mean, people describe all these different feelings, feelings of being watched. Uh, just knowing that something else is there. I mean, is Bigfoot the only crypt that makes you feel that way? I mean, could you, Adam, you, you're, you're psychic, medium, you're, you're more in touch with yourself than I am. I mean, can you really feel these things? Can you feel their presence? I mean, how do you, just knowing they're there? Can, can, I, ask, head? can I ask this since you asked Adam to, to talk about this for a second? So, Adam went on an investigation with us recently that one house. Um, I know where you ended up. I, I don't want to give the location away, but the guy was saying that his dog <clears> had <throat> something out in the hallway, and you had pinpointed what that was in that one little back closet. This was the three-story house. You know what I'm talking about? Would that be a cryptid? What? Because you, you picked up on something that was in there, kind of like a a guard almost. Or yeah, would that be it, more of a more of a shapeshifter, maybe. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to remember exactly. Yeah, I can't remember all the wording that I used, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, a, a human entity at any point. It had nothing to do. It was never human at any point. It, it definitely was um, odd looking, you know, in the sense that you know it was not normal, you yeah. know. But we we also know that you know, the, the 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 land of where it is, you know, was full of Native Americans and things, and so there's a lot of stuff that Native Americans did <laughs> to protect certain locations and things like that so there's no doubt that they you know could have put something whether you want to call it a curse or whatever you know on that that location or the land itself maybe not necessarily that exact spot but it was not the the normal you know typical spirit that you would see you know it's not a human spirit that you would you know that lived right. at some point that you can communicate so and didn't you say it was it was placed there as kind of a guard and it really didn't do anything in this house it just was there watching exactly yeah. exactly yeah it was it was it, you know not necessarily for the house but but for right. the it was watching a spot it probably didn't even know the house was there maybe i don't know but correct yeah i didn't i mean i'm trying to remember exactly that moment but i don't remember it being like truly you know um set for the the house itself but i know it was definitely in the area right. especially close by well, you know, you know, they say the same thing about gnomes, garden gnomes, or, or in gargoyles, gargoyles. And some people believe that they're great protectors. They're in all the old ancient buildings, watch over the building. And some people just think they're pure evil. I mean, you know, what are garden gnomes? I mean, the list goes on and on. Kelly said something about a golem. A golem? Oh, that's that little, looks like a the goblin. red guy. Yeah, it looks like the, the little red guy. Wasn't he... He, they, they had one of them in the movie... Uh, the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Because yeah. I did The Hobbit, whatever. Yep. yep. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, you know, I don't think that's the with same you, thing as our gnomes. But. With you talking about gnomes, I uh, my nephew actually had a gnome sighting over in Oak Openings. He, uh, him and his buddy were there, and they actually were looking over this little hill and kept seeing these beans pop up with hats on. Fairies or gnomes? Gnomes. No, gnomes. Yeah, gnomes wear hats. Mm -hmm. That's weird. He swears I, to they, God he saw him. You know, he explained it to me really in depth. 
You know, I, I just think a lot of people, when they experience these things, they don't want to come forward. Stephanie Hunker is, do the men in black count? I, I wouldn't call uh, it. I, I wouldn't it's call hard. It no, no I, I don't. That's more government conspiracy stuff, right? Yeah, I yeah, think I, that's something different. I you think the Raelian. People and, you know, you know. Here's the thing, and, and and maybe you guys can help. Let's go back to Native American uh, a little bit. You know, the Wendigo. Uh, they say what? It's half human, half beast. Um, it's it's cannibal. It's cannibalistic. It, I mean, the, come on, guys. That's some scary shit, and that goes back thousands of years to Native this, Americans. This is one I don't know anything about. <laughs> uh, Adam, is that is that specifically what you were talking about? Is the Jersey Devil thing, or is that more skin water? Well, that's the thing is there's there's I think there's a lot of times where m there's multiple things that 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 sound similar to yeah. each other. Yep, those two so, sound like to me. Right. Right. So I mean, you know, every you know location, every continent, every country, you know, they all have their beliefs. I mean, look how many different titles there is for Bigfoot. So yeah. I think yeah. that's that goes the same even just in North America, how many different things we have for shape men around here, I think. Right. Well, yes. and you and you want to know what's really amazing about that? When you say Bigfoot, all the different names, their personalities are a bit different. Like they say Bigfoot, and let me put it, let me try to explain it this way. Bigfoot gives us all the warnings and the signs that we need. He breaks trees. He blocks off pathways. He's saying, this is my area. Yep. That area is yours. You stay over there. Don't bother me. Are you guys still there? Yeah. Yeah, we're still there. I think we lost Jeff for a minute. Yeah. It, it, what he's saying is, you stay over in your area. I'll stay over in my area. I won't bother you, but don't come in. And I've even heard that they don't really attack until you take a shot at them or do something that crosses their territory. And they're giving us every out there. They're giving us every way. They're blocking paths, like I said. They're, they're bending trees. Joe, can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. I didn't. I don't know yeah. what happened to Jeff. I'm going to have to walk out just for 10 seconds here in a minute to let Einstein out. So, so, but yet the Yeti, they say, is aggressive, like a polar bear. He'll hunt you down for days on end. He'll hunt you. So if you're out looking for a Yeti, you really don't need to go look for a Yeti. Yeti already knows you're there. He's already hunting you and trying to figure out a way to, to rip you to shreds. <laughs> so their, their personalities are totally different. Like I've even heard the Ohio Grassman is a bit aggressive. And that's a Bigfoot. So you got all these different, oh. different. I watched the show earlier. Uh, Yeti's now in Alaska, and and they're also aggressive. Why do you guys think that is? Well, they could just be territorial. You know, I mean, there's not too many of them out there. We believe that there's probably fifteen hundred. That's what they're saying. But, mm -hmm. but yet, Joe, but yet, Joe, Bigfoot in America hangs back and kind of hides from you. Yeah. Hard to find, and yet the Yeti will, will come find you and tear your tent apart and, and kill everybody. I mean, do we know that, or is that just certain ones? Ooh, that's well, interesting. What's you this? know, I mean, yeah. if you count corner any wild animal, it's, he's going to attack. It's sort of like a dog that has to go out, go out and go to the bathroom. When a dog really gets aggressive, yeah. he's going to whine, and he's right. going to scratch the door and right. try to he's get out. Gonna, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jay, Jamie brings up something really interesting. You know, uh, the whole interdimensional thing. Joe, will you touch on that for a second? Yeah. I mean, are they interdimensional? Do they come along with UFO sightings? I mean, this whole Bigfoot thing has really, like, exploded. Well, and the I'll thing is, back. okay, so we don't know, for one thing. But there are so many accounts where when people see a Bigfoot, they'll have UFO encounters, and they'll also have poltergeist activity. And use, if they um, will have a Bigfoot encounter, when I say they have poltergeist activity, I mean not right then, but it actually happens later. Almost like, could you imagine if a Bigfoot was interdimensional and he could <coughs> pop into your location and move stuff around? I mean, that's the kind of thing they're seeing. But I learned um, a few months ago, I was at a conference down in uh, Coshocton, Ohio, and the guy was talking about lots of times we have indications or 
we have incidences where the Bigfoot will like half disappear. Okay. I've heard that. I've heard now that. he made a great point and he's looking into it. He's building a suit so he can test his theory. But if you think of a polar bear, a polar bear is not white. A lot of people think polar bears are white, but they're not. And this, this was all new to me. Yep. Um, if you shaved a bear, a polar bear, he'd have black skin, right? He's black. He's okay. Got black skin. The reason why he looks white is because the hair is actually like glass tubes. There's, he has two types of hair and half the hair is almost like a clear glass tube that radiates heat into the body. And this guy is, is thinking that maybe Bigfoots have that same kind of hair where they can turn a certain way and they'll actually like fade out. And that's one of the reasons why they disappear so much. That's why we think they're invisible. That's what his theory is. And it was like, when I was listening to him speak, he made so much sense. That, that, that and what he's doing is he's actually taking a black bear skin and he's taking a polar bear skin and actually weaving the hairs together to see if he can make it so that the way that the light hits it, it'll disappear. So that's wow. a theory. I just saw um, within the last month or so, whether it was on Kickstarter or Indigo, you know, Indigo Go, um, there's somebody selling a, um, whether it's plastic or whatever it is, but you literally, they, they, they showed it in the, you know, the promo video, but you can have this piece of glass or whatever it is, plastic, put it in front of you and it will literally look as if you are not there. Yeah, it diffuses the light. Correct. Yeah, it shifts everything, so it looks like it's just a continuous thing, like, you know, a scenery, a beach scene, mm -hmm. a forest scene. So that would completely make sense if that's the... the yeah. I, I love it. I think it's a yeah. fantastic thing. Yeah, I mean, I, would make sense. I know that polar bears don't disappear, but he, right? he feels that that might be why they kind of disappear. Is And it's just like... Okay, like an octopus, an octopus, like a cuttlefish. Right. It can change to so many different colors Cam or yeah. um, chameleon, same way. Yeah. It's just the way that the skin is folded and stuff that changes. And we don't know, but maybe this is what Bigfoot are doing, why they disappear so easy. Yeah. Superior camouflage and even mm -hmm. then our human eyes are not, you know, sensitive or trained to that. I mean, I've uh, done tracking classes just to learn how the basics of tracking, you know, game and, uh, you know, whether you, you could get down to the minutes of, as to when a track was left. I mean, if you practice it long enough. So same thing would apply. You know, if, yeah. if our eyes are not trained enough and we're not practicing how to look for them and to see the differences. I mean, take the movie The Predator. You know, yeah. I mean, that the, the idea of being able to put a cloak on where you have this kind of heatish, you know, kind of weird, you know, just uh, di uh, diffusion of light that you can still see it, but not clearly. Yeah, so, it, that's know, the you're... same thing as that sheet of plastic you're talking about. Yeah. And you can see the diffusion of light with heat just by driving on a hot road. And it... it's the same thing. It bends the light. Right. Wouldn't it be perfect out in the woods this year at our Bigfoot expedition if Bigfoot really did show up about three feet from Uncle Jeff and he was like invisible? He looked like maybe the background and all of a sudden he stepped out. You know, I find that this amazing. You know what else really spooks me but, about? Hang on a second, about, but I thought you banned Uncle Jeff. Yeah. Here's, here's, here's another thing that really begins to spook me about Bigfoot that I've been hearing. When you're out in the woods and you, nobody's around for miles and miles, and you see this light off in the distance in the woods, if you guys are you guys following me, kind of, and yep. then do you think that this Bigfoot is more as intelligent as they, they say? Because so many people are coming up missing, they're they're like just vanishing. <coughs> they're, they're following this light, thinking that they're going to find something. If it might be I uh, UFO, I don't know, but. 
it's they're being lured into the danger zone. Does that mean so they're being lured into these woods? It's not Joe. It's not you and I tracking. It's you like know, we're, 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 it's like, it's baiting is what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean that Jamie's saying something that that scares me. So there's a couple things going on with Bigfoot that you know years ago I never heard that are really beginning to kind of terrify me. Yeah, I mean, are are they evolving? You know, there you go. I, I would say they are, Joe. They would have to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't. Well, maybe it is like like Harold said at the beginning of the show that maybe it's just another species with this special skin and fur that can camouflage really well mm -hmm. that we just don't know about yet. I mean, it could I mean, very well be a primate that's you know in the primate family, whatever. But they've got, you know, they've adapted to nature so that they're not seen or you know I don't know. You know, I mean, think about this. We've all been up to the UP. We've all been way up it by Copper Harbor and all that, where all the moose are. Yeah. A yeah. moose is the size of a pickup truck. Yeah, it, it, dangerous, dangerous. Their horns or antlers, whatever you call them, are 12 feet apart or 12 feet wide. They're four foot thick. And if they're standing in the woods, you wouldn't see them. Yeah. Yeah, that's super. You know, that's kind of a spooky thing. So, you know, Bigfoot is... Hi, Ricky. Uh, Ricky Fishcorn's on. Jamie asked a question. So back to the question about the difference in behavior. Maybe the Yeti, on the opposite hand, are, relative, are relatives of the Wendigo since they're found in areas where people may resort to cannibalism out of the climato climatological... Mm -hmm. death. I never thought of that. I yeah, mean, if, they're, they're, if we're talking so the Yeti... If we're talking the Yeti as in up in, like, Alaska or... You know where there's a lot of snow there's not enough food to keep them going maybe they have to resort yeah, to that. Aren't, aren't, aren't bigfoot and yetis aren't they um plant eaters or are they meat eaters or both well they're they're saying both now i yeah. mean the, the world's changing even jeff when it comes to uh cryptozoology like bigfoot being intelligent to lure you into the woods to to eat you to kill you or whatever to rip you to shreds. I mean, these are things I never used to hear about. I mean, you 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 stumbled across a Bigfoot is how you run into a Bigfoot. You just dumb, heartily stumbled into it. And the whole time, well, now they're saying Bigfoot's tracking you. He knows you're there long yep. before you yep. know where he's at. Mm -hmm. And he's got an eye on you. And I mean, they're highly intelligent, the way I understand it. So, And here's you know, another thing. Harold, this is going to really, I think you're going to jump out of your chair with this one. We're, I was on a show a couple nights ago with a bunch of Bigfoot experts, or not experts, but, you know, Bigfoot yeah. people yeah. Uh, for a show that's coming up. And they started talking about how they feel that Bigfoot can actually make someone freeze. Okay. Now, when I say freeze, I don't mean cold or that. I mean talking just stop. And I had an incident where we were having a garage sale here at my house. And someone came up to me and said that he had a Bigfoot encounter in Lambertville, Michigan, back in the 70s. I heard this story, Joe. Okay. I've heard of this Lambertville. Now, Bigfoot. he said that he saw the Bigfoot, the Bigfoot charged on him, and his buddy froze. He ran. He went back to his buddy, and he was stiff as a board. He couldn't move him, and he had to, like, shake him to wake him up. Okay, so... Here's what I'm getting at where I think you're going to go nuts on this, Harold. We think that Bigfoot and all large mammals can do this is put out infrasound to control how you feel. Yeah, wow. that's, yep. And infrasound because, does have a lot, and it has a lot to do with your mm -hmm. emotions. I mean, because it. we found out that whales do it. Yeah, we found out that in some cases they've det detected in gorilla, you know. So who knows? And yeah. is Bigfoot's putting out infrasound to freeze you or to? I I don't want to say freeze because it's, I, people like think it, you know, it just goes stiff. But, but Joe, let, let me add this: one of the most reported stories, fe the feelings of being watched, kind of like paranoia a little bit, feelings of being watched, feelings of being followed. You know, that yeah, goes panic. Right along with it. That goes right along with infrasound. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that's what infrasound does. Wood says he thinks they're aliens. You know, I they I could just, be. Yeah, they could I, be. Because infrasound. Oh, sorry. No, I just I heard the story of a hunter. This guy hunted the woods 
Uh, every time he wasn't working, he was hunting all season long, different animals. This guy was an outdoorsman uh, from the word go. And he was up in a tree stand one time and he encountered, and this is a true story, he's passed away now. He he encountered a Bigfoot that walked up on him, okay? Out of the, just stepped out of the woods into this little clearing uh, right on top of him. And Hi, John. How are you? John, John's uh, follows. Nice to see you. Um, um, he was scared to death. He, you talk about freezing. He couldn't shoot him, and he had a shotgun on him. Mm-hmm. He couldn't run. He could. He just was mesmerized by this thing's eye. And, and just every, hi, Frank, how are you? Um, he was scared to death. He, when he finally took, got his courage enough to turn around and get out of there, he dropped his gun. He ran so fast, tried to pick up his gun, but he was being tracked from both sides by two different Bigfoots. And they parallel to him, followed him a mile and a half out of these woods. What was the point of this? Why didn't they just kill him if that's what they were going to do? I mean, his territory could not have been two miles. What was the purpose? I mean, you're talking about a highly intelligent animal here, obviously. But what was the purpose of paralleling himself to this, this guy? I mean, obviously they could have come around in front of him and, and captured him. I don't understand. The guy made it back to his truck, but the one thing he said about it, he wished he never encountered him. He wished he never saw this mm-hmm. thing. It changed his life dramatically. He didn't want to talk about it. He didn't want to go on TV shows. It scared the hell out of him. He knew something existed that didn't exist five minutes before that. And not only that, there was two of them. It, it changed it changed his life in every aspect it went to to the negative that makes sense mm-hmm. so it, that's yeah. something that you know what they found in the wild that gorillas do the same thing though gorillas will not come out and just attack you they'll try everything they can to get you out of their area first and if that's following you on both sides to guide you out of the woods who knows? I mean, we don't know what they're going to act like, but they we have seen where gorillas will do stuff such as throw sticks, throw rocks. Well, it's almost like bang like, on trees. It's almost Whoop. like a, a human encounter with a bear. Mm-hmm. Like we don't attack a bear when we see one out in the wild. I mean, we they you try and get it to go. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, you just get out you of know, here. You bear. don't rush a bear. You don't. You know, it's illegal to shoot them, so you don't, you know, charge at them with a knife or anything. It's like, get out, get out, and turn scan away. I wonder if that's what they're doing, like you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, I think that they would rather get you out of their area than to try to kill you. So Bigfoot is a pacifist. Yeah, here's the thing. I Guys, we, we've been on an hour just talking about crips. What, uh, I want to I wanna take a poll. Jeff, what crip would scare you the most? And why? I gotta I mean, think I, like okay, so Adams, one of Adams' uh, teammates has an encounter where the dog man was crawling on the ceiling at her. I, I, I think right. that would really, really scare hmm. the crap out of me. A dog man. I've never heard of him crawl, crawl on the ceiling. Joe, is, what about is that? What it was, Adam? Right? Yes. Well, the, yeah. I I witnessed it. That was that yeah. was me. I, mean, I think that would. Hmm. Yeah, that would give me. Joe, that what about you? I, I've always thought about the dog man also because I don't think that they're passive aggressive or anything like that. I think they're just aggressive. Yeah. And um, their story is, you know, people that see them don't tell stories because they don't make it out. Yeah. Adam, how about you? Ooh, you know, I, I guess because I've already encountered the dog man and had a nice long conversation with it, <laughs> at least with one of them. Yeah, uh, puppy, puppy. <laughs> but, you know, I want to. I'd probably go back out. I'd probably head west and 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 be a little bit more worrisome for like the Wendigos and things, where there, you know, there's some some interesting video footage of them, and the the idea of some of them being shapeshifters and things like that yeah. that can completely look like a person and then yet yeah. turning into like a wolf and stuff that. Yeah. that are huge that 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 would probably get me especially if it was real close by if it was out in the distance which is like what some of the, the video footage is it's not so bad 
but I'd probably freak if I saw something, you know, go from like a person to a wolf kind of thing <laughs> and then start you know, running towards me. Yeah, the last, I'd probably run. I think I think for me it's a Wendigo as well. The last uh, person I heard interviewed described this Wendigo as it had a lot of human characteristics, but its fingers were twice as long, looked like they were broken, bent, and gnarly claws on the end. And the head, which you would call it, of, of a werewolf or a huge wolf, stood bipedal. And uh, I just think a Wendigo, I, I might do more than just run. I think I might have some issues. So a Wendigo for me, what's Jamie saying? That's a long question. I'm going to let you read it. <laughs> so she reads, a, yeah, cryptid on cryptids. There's a website for everybody to follow me, can mythological creatures. Debating if uh, what is that? The Pizza Board is a cryptid. I, but I don't even know what that is. Yeah, there's so many God. crypts. Isn't that funny? If you Google crypts, my God, there's hundreds of. You know another one? And then we're we'll get off the air. You know another one that scares the hell out of me, and I'm just thinking of it is the Goat Man out of Kentucky. I there's a bridge in Kentucky. And I can't even tell you what city it is in Kentucky, <laughs> but once you cross it and you go onto this bridge, this Goat Man encounter. So many people have jumped from that bridge, and I don't know if, it's, if it causes you to think suicidal thoughts or if you're too afraid to cross back over the bridge and you just think it's better to jump. But have anybody heard of the Goat Man? Yeah, Ghost yeah. Adventures, actually. That was an episode there in, in, in uh, Jay, one of the guys on Ghost Adventures. His wife I do remember that. I do, I she do got, remember that. She got messed with big time on that. She actually... Really? She quit following them around after that. Episode. Well, that's, you know, the goat man, they say, gets into your mind. It's more of a, yeah, a she spiritual, got, paranormal thing. That was no, There was no faking in that episode. She was, she was, she got messed with. Well, they say, it, 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 Jeff, it says it kind of possesses you for you in yep. order for you to jump from the bridge. Yep, and I and think the, Aaron actually got tossed. Like, I mean, it, it was on camera. Like, he actually got thrown by something that, it, like, eight to ten feet like i wish you could pull up a picture of the goat man that would be cool everybody google the goat man when you get up here and it's from kentucky oh goat man is demonic yeah jamie that's that's what they're saying it's you know but here's the thing is it a crypt or is it or is it a demon i mean is there do they cross over is it interdimensional but who we just don't know who's going to study these things i mean we don't i'm not going to go out trying to find a goat man and find a body to dissect it and find let's other throw this in there too i mean are, are maybe all cryptids demonic because the de- demons have never lived on the earth in human form right i i would say they're here to scare scare you but or why would they be here you know why I take mean, something why take... Change from a human looking to a to a wolf or something that is a wolf man or a dog man or whatever i mean that doesn't sound right. anything natural Bigfoot, I you wouldn't know, put in that category, though. You know, and right. we we talk about all these cryptids and all the different styles of cryptids and all that, and you got to think, where do they come from? So maybe are they we? are shape-shifting demons. Yeah. Who knows? Oh, I don't, but that's, that's, that's what makes it so much fun. Here's another thing, too, that I think we let's all put our skeptic hat on for a second. <laughs> so, like, you know, st- certain stories like the Hulk of Woods, you know, that's a local story around right. here or something with right. it, but, but it was all made up. Right. You know what I mean? In another story, there's the uh, the Elmore Ghost Rider that certain people were doing that to throw people off because they love hearing people tell about the, the Elmore Ghost Rider stories. But they were actually out there doing it to scare people. Jeff, so I, can I, how much yeah. of that is involved in the cryptid stuff? How much is not not real? Like people just make the stories up. Oh, yeah, you could start a legend story so right. easily. Yeah, a lot of percentage. Jeff, going back to what you said, you, have you guys heard of the Gibbs Bridge? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that, that's another uh, story. About, I don't know, 10 years ago, whatever how long it's been ago, I got a call from the Berkey Sheriff's Department very early <laughs> morning one morning. There was four students um, that uh, oh. were out to the Gibbs Bridge and they felt that they were getting some paranormal activity and apparently they read the story on my uh, website or whatever uh, when we were out there and somebody came up out, out from underneath that bridge and put a couple of bullets through their, right? put a couple yeah. bullets through their windshield yep. i mean so the, the sheriff's department mm-hmm. called me and 
I guess what apparently when the girls were in the police station, they said where they heard the story. They said with the Toledo Ohio ghost hunter. <laughs> Girl told a really scary story, so we wanted to come out and see the paranormal. But we got to be careful, guys. But you some know, of these things, like you, the Gibbs Bridge, Jeff. That's a that's a that was a real thing, and yeah, I mean that people are there, and they're they're not they're not demonic. They're worse. They're going to shoot your ass. Yeah. Well, yep. that story, you know, there was always stories of somebody that was <laughs> chasing people off Gibbs Bridge, yep. and that is a true story of a guy that he actually lived by the bridge, and I'm not making this up. A it's not a no, legend they, they, or anything like no, that. They, they this said this it was, was guy. Yep. Yeah, he he drove a red truck. And he lived right by there, and he would chase people with a gun off that bridge because he thought that he basically owned that bridge. Right. Yeah. And luckily, only, he's not with us anymore. So. Right. The only thing the girls described was he had no shirt on, no shoes, was wearing an old pair of ripped up jeans, and a shotgun in his hand, and he put it through the windshield. And they were terrified. I mean, just terrified. And I hated to have my name even attached to that. I told the chair, I might take it off the website. I'll put a disclaimer on there to stay in the way that there's something very real there that's going to really, I mean, I'd rather be possessed than shot, all right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll battle the demon first. Guys, thanks for being on the show tonight. I don't want to take up any time, but I want to I want to close with talking about class again. Anybody that might be listening, um, you got an opportunity August 4th on Thursday evenings from 6 to 8. Um, Thursdays to, to go out to Owens for the study of the paranormal and maybe a little bit of ghost hunting. But more importantly, you're going to get to see Adam. Uh, you're going to get to see Joe, uh, Don from Fringe. You're going to get to see Butch, uh, Michelle, Carmen, um, Becky. And the only thing you really got to do is listen to me talk here and there. That's the only price you got to pay for that one. So get over to School of Beer and Rest. Great caffeine for that episode. Right. Should I give up? Uh, should I give? Should I give up? We have we have one more thing we have to address. Okay, and I got I got this. I'm not going to look at it yet. And I'd like okay. to say something before we leave too. Uh, we have, guys, a, we guys have guys an talk. angry emoji up here. What's that? It, it, somebody's mad about the show. All right. Yeah. Love love this. Glad I caught it. Thank you. Who's mad about the show besides me? Her name is Cindy. Bristol? Cindy who? Oh, hi, Cindy. How are you? <laughs> She's mad at you for some reason. Hey, Cindy, it's nice to see you. I hope uh, I hope you're doing well. I stalked you on Facebook. Uh, really, that's why she's mad. Yeah. <laughs> no, Cindy's Cindy's an old dear friend of mine. It's Cindy. Harold's the one at the window. Cindy. Yeah. <laughs> Cindy. Uh, Cindy lived uh, uh, across the street from me. I lived out in the point for about 25 years, and she was a great neighbor. And I uh, was good friends with her husband, who's deceased now, unfortunately. But what a great guy. His name was Jim. No, I know this family. They came to the message circles last year. Uh, Adam, are we going to do another a message circle in September here? Do we have one planned or no? I or do don't. I have to go through Dana. Well, well, we'll make sure with Dana, but I mean, I know there was a date that was, you know, talked about. Yeah, I don't know. I think it was in September, but I'm not sure when. I don't know, but uh, hopefully we have another message circle. Cindy, get your butt out to that. Uh, it'd be nice to see you again. Go ahead, Joe. You wanted to say something. Oh, I just want to say, you know, if anybody's listening or watching that wants to talk more about Bigfoot, um, I'm going to be at a conference this weekend that's up by you, Harold. Um, it's the Michigan Bigfoot Conference. Mm -hmm. And it's in, let me look at my notes, Chelsea, Michigan, which is not that far. It's just by Ann Arbor. That's, and, a, pretty um, good, that's a pretty good convention, isn't it? Well, it's their first, well, it's their first one, but they had one last year. It's different yeah. people, but it's basically oh. the same show. And um, we just I just want to try to get a lot of people up there because I don't... Now, don't put this out on the air, but I don't think too many people are going to show up. But... Um, Was I supposed to end this? We're going to... No. No. Okay. No, no. I just... <laughs> Oops. I just want to bring a lot of people up so that we have yeah. a really good discussion about Bigfoot. It's going to be a long show. I'm going to be very bored, and I need people to talk to. Can, can I ask you one question? This <laughs> this uh, short answer question. So is there so like there's um like Michigan has the move on for UFO stuff. Is there a Bigfoot tracking network like in Michigan mm. or Ohio or anything like that? Yeah, you know, like one group that tracks all of the sightings. There are a lot of maps, but I don't know who runs the maps. Okay, I didn't know if there was an organization mm -hmm. for, for Bigfoot sightings. Oh, that's kind of cool. BFRO? 
Yeah. Is that what it is? BFRO? Yeah, that, that's the biggest group there oh, is, okay. the BFRO. That's okay. I mean, go ahead, Adam. There, there is a group, and I'm trying to remember who it is now. Oh, my gosh. Um, we, uh, we, at, at our Parafest last year, we had a couple of them, and uh, I'll have to go back and dig of who it is, but there is there is a, a group that, um, you know, retired police officers, you know, and that, yeah. um, that are, are part of this, and uh, I'll dig for it and, and let you guys know offline, but yeah, there is a group in Michigan that does track everything yeah. that that comes in, so yeah, there's, there is a group out there. Cool. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you guys have a a cryptid encounter, cryptid encounter. Um, I hope it's uh, not the not the not the wind to go though. <laughs> uh, but Joe, our search for Bigfoot continues. Uh, another expedition, Bigfoot four coming up, hopefully this fall, and I'll let you know how it goes. But maybe yeah, next Bigfoot week, one, two, and three are more like a comedy series. I'm just saying. Well, yeah. you know, we're gonna be we're gonna be missing a couple of investigators <laughs> at the next one. Uh, I got a couple. I got a feeling that. Uh, a couple of investigators won't be with me this year. Joe, let's get together well, next year. Joe, down. if you if you really want to do something serious, <laughs> we got to get we got to get a hold of Burrow. We got to get a hold of State Park. We got to get some permission to, to to walk some property. We got to interview the people. We have to do it right. And, I'd and like a, I'd like to have a town hall meeting at one of the diners or yeah, something. Yeah, ab absolutely. Let's do it right. We'll kind of do it like finding. Hey, Cliff from that. Uh, Cliff was one of the founders of the BFRO from Finding Bigfoot. Speaking of town hall meetings, that's when they were. Those guys are goofy. I, I have a lot of respect for them, but they are goofy. Um, I very really seriously want to continue. Um, I, I hope I never see the goat man or when you go, but Bigfoot's something I, I, I believe in my heart that it, they could possibly exist. Um, and I, I think I wouldn't mind spending three days out in the woods if we do it right. If yeah, I mean, you know, we're not going to sit there and pour, start pouring cocktails at seven p.m. Yeah. Adam, we're going to party or we're going to see Bigfoot. One or right, the other. right. Adam, thank you very much for being on. You didn't have to stay on the whole time, but and I'll see you in class, right? Yep, yep absolutely. Right. Thank you so right. much. Okay, I'm going to have Jeff. You take thirty seconds, Adam and Joe. Tell everybody what you guys are doing next, and I'll see everybody in class, and then I'm going to draw this name. All right. So right. Jeff, tell us what, what you got going on. Okay, so we will be doing some kind of show on Thursday. I'm not sure yet. I'm trying to line up some guests for the newest season of um, Boo Bites on the Paranormal. That's our podcast on Thursdays. And for the class, one thing that I will be discussing um, is like the Estes method, you know, experimental methods in paranormal research, like Ouija boards, Estes, you know, stuff like that. But also, I go into some of the equipment and kind of debunk it, like the Ovilus and the uh, these these apps are just garbage. These phone apps are their junk. So, and I talk about my findings in that. And I do get into EMF a little bit because, you know, EMF equals ghosts in the paranormal community. But you'd have to, con okay, so we do not emit enough EMF as people to set off an EMF detector. So that I, I don't understand the theory of, so when I die, all of a sudden my energy is amplified. Like it, it doesn't make sense. So I don't, I'm not a big fan of the EMF ghost devices so if i if i take the class i'll learn more right hopefully Although, Good, did you not pay attention the last time i gave this lecture <laughs> right well every class i hope to, i hope I I was listen, no but here's the truth if i could pick up 10 percent knowledge from what all you guys are saying it's been a great day and i'm a lot further ahead aren't i adam what do you got going on real quick uh you, you know uh the only thing we well next weekend uh you know, a week from yesterday, we, we have um, our team and then uh, the glass team are putting on a, a, an event at the Old Mill Museum. We got a couple of the uh, Tennessee Wraith Chaser guys that are coming out. We're going to have a meet and greet and then a ghost hunt until like 1 a.m. So that's kind of cool. And then the weekend after that is the Shamanic Journeys class. But, but um, you know, I still do my uh, Saturday morning shows, you know, mid-morning medium chat. So that's where we just kind of hang out and typically have some topics to, to kind of throw at, uh, you know, people and that usually typically happen like during the week. So it's usually kind of something I uh, highlight on, but uh, yeah, I got a couple of things coming up, some more gallery readings, uh, going to be starting to open up personal readings and things of that sort, but I'll be announcing that uh, uh, in the recent uh, future. Perfect. Perfect. Joe, what are we doing? Um, like I said, this weekend coming up, I got the Michigan Bigfoot conference. It's running from nine to 11 at night. So 
come on out and hang out with me. Uh, keep me awake. Keep me from crawling under the table and taking a nap. Um, and then after that, I am on Arizona Tramp's show. Um, I'm not exactly sure the night because I don't have my notes in front of me. Uh, Tramp will come on and let us know. Um, he's got Black Swap, uh, Black Swap Radio going on again. I'm going to be on there. And then after that, August 25th through the 27th, I'll be up in Sault Ste. Marie at the Michigan Paracon. Can I add one more thing to my profile here real quick? Sure, sure. Okay. So recently I have been named, okay, everybody knows who Ed and Lorraine Warren are. Mm -hmm. And um, I am a member of the Warren Legacy Foundation, which is a paranormal research group all throughout the world. Um, it's growing daily. But I have been named the regional director for the Midwest region for the Warren Legacy Foundation. So congratulations. That um, is a, that's it's, awesome. It's, it's, Let's it's talk. Good yeah. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I have, I have a lot I have a lot of respect for Ed and Lorraine Warren. And their their grandson too. He was on our show one time and I'll mm -hmm. tell you what, a guy that is in this for the right reasons, you know, that's that's Chris McKinnell all day. And yeah, I saw that his, I saw that show it was awesome. Yeah, another one of his friends is Joe Frankie, who was um he was he studied directly under Ed and Lorraine Warren just out of college. And that guy has more knowledge in his pinky than I than I have, you know. Yes. Oh my God, he's fantastic! Isn't it? Isn't it funny? You know, we've been involved in the paranormal and the like for years and years. Yeah. You know, the mentors that come and go. I can remember Dr. Ken so well <clears throat> when I was a young investigator, and uh, you know, he he would walk in with a recorder and a camera. And one time, he wasn't going to let me investigate with him because he said all my equipment was going to scare the hell out of. Me. <laughs> every ghost in the place and I, I i brought like you know a couple thousand dollars worth of stuff and i thought it was the coolest thing since sliced cheese and not a thing was allowed to be taken out of the trunk you were the original uh, zach baggins yeah you know? yeah so you know you learn you learn as you go and uh you know we're having a good run it's nice to see that all you guys are busy and but see, sure i got to do this every once in a while too harold i you know all that being said, I'm, you know, I'm really talking to some cool national people and all this other stuff, but you know, I've always considered you my mentor. Like, no, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm you, not kissing your butt. Ah, you're you blowing kiss. smoke up my ass. But seriously, <laughs> you, when I took your class, I took ghost hunting 101, like what, five, six years ago, something like it that. It's been a while, yeah. And I said in that class, I'm like, man, I want to be on that team someday. And I never, ever thought a chance in hell I would ever get to be on your team. And you know, you and I are really close friends. And oh yeah, you're like a brother. Right? So much from you. Oh well, yeah, you're like a dad to me. So you know, it, I'm glad. I'm glad that you feel that way. You know, I'm I'm very humbled. Uh, you know, Butch is much older now. I'm much older now, and you know, we're just kind of doing some things we like to do. And you know, I get to hang out and see Adam. I get to see Joe and and Don and other guys in the paranormal community that I have a lot of respect for, and personally like and feel that they're good friends of mine. And I. You know, trust is big in this field. Uh, admiration is one thing. Respect is another. Um, I have a great deal of respect for all you guys. I mean, Adam knows how I, Joe, Adam, you guys, I don't Adam's need to tell you guys. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how, to, I don't need to tell you guys how I feel. So, and Jeff, I don't need to tell you how I feel about you. So, no, it's all guys, good. I just, I just have to put it out there. Like, yeah, you, you want to come out and see some amazing people, you know, uh, Joe, you're going to be at Tramp Show on the mm -hmm. third at eight o'clock okay. on a Wednesday. Uh, All right. Black Swamp. Uh, yeah, Jesus. I couldn't. Rem I didn't have my notes in front of me, so. Right, right. Anyways, I hope to see some people in class. I drew a name. It is Denise Raditz. Oh. Um, if if she's still watching, please try to make contact. Message me, and uh, I'll make arrangements for you to take the class if you really want to. And thanks everybody that played that, uh, played the game. Swap gas is what Tramp said. Tramp, it's nice to see you. Anyways, guys, I'm done. I don't know about you guys. Happy hauntings from Toes. And thanks a bunch, guys, for joining me. I'll see everybody in class, all right? All right. All right. We are still on until I tell you we're not. So. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.